Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about Creative Cloud Library updates. If you're not using libraries, you should because it makes organizing and finding stuff not only on one computer, but any place that you're logged into your Creative Cloud account. It makes working with your stuff so much easier. Um, I know I stick all of my Mogerts into libraries and it just makes working with them easier. Let's start with Illustrator. We're going to create, take a logo that was design, I designed, stick it into a library and access it in other applications. Let's also talk about sharing and browsing online libraries. Let's go take a look. So the libraries panel has been updated. It now looks much easier with these easy to get to tabs that you can click on and you can see all the different stuff, different categories in here. These are grayed out because they're videos and they don't make sense to Illustrator. But um, if we go to my video revealed, you can see there's a bunch of graphics that I use. And for instance, there's my logo in white that I can just drag right onto a track inside Premiere Pro, change the opacity, put it in the corner as a bug, which I already have as a little bug already. Okay, so let's create a new library. And the easiest way to do that is to click here. You can also go down to the bottom and click this button here, create a new library. You can also browse shared libraries and find public libraries. They're also down at the bottom. So here we can browse shared libraries. This is opening up the Creative Cloud desktop application. Um, I'm going to enable all of these cookies. No shared libraries with me. Oh, well, if someone had shared those libraries, that's where they would be. And we can find public libraries. Same thing. Now it's opened up all of the libraries that are available to look at. And I can follow any of these artists. And I'm sure, and that's always changing. So make sure you check that out. Okay, so back over to here, let's create a uh, new library. And we're gonna do it for this imaginary brand, Diolacra. Create that library. And I'll select all of this artwork on the page and add the graphic. And that will add it in here. And you can see the transparency grid in there, which means that it's going to be easy to work with in other applications. So let's jump over to Photoshop. And there's the, the library. It's now open in here, available here. So there's the graphic. I can drag that in. And it's telling me the action creates a smart object that's linked back to the Creative Cloud libraries by default. To get them separated, hold down Alt on Windows, Option on Mac. And you can say, don't show me this uh, again. So content placed in frames are always placed as smart objects. So there it is. And I can resize that, position that. And that's going to come in as a smart object. So if we look at our layers, you'll see that there's a special layer in Photoshop. So that little cloud there means that that's directly connected. So if I open that live from the library in, in Illustrator, update it, and it would update it here in multiple locations. Okay, so that's working on Photoshop. Let's go to our libraries in Premiere Pro. And there it is, Diolacra. And... I want to drop it in right at that point there. So there's the uh, logo. I'm going to go back to my editing workspace. I'm going to trim this just a little bit and then hit Control D, Command D on the Mac just to put default transitions on both sides. And I'll scale this down a little bit. Place it up a little higher. You may surprise yourself. Do not vacations. You owe it to yourself. So back in Illustrator, if I right click on the logo and choose edit, 
it will open it up in another document. Look at the name of this. So the libraries are all controlled by Adobe in the background. There's a local folder and an online folder. Those are not meant to be uh, organized by you. So don't hunt around for that particular file in your computer. They're managed through the libraries. So now I'm editing that particular uh, graphic. So I'll select it and just, I'm gonna create a little bit of a seafoam kind of look to this. And I'll just save that. And it's saved back to here. So if we go back to Photoshop, it's updated in the Photoshop document. And if we go back to Premiere Pro, it's already updated. So there's the uh, logo. If you want, you can view it on the website. So this will open that graphic up in the Creative Cloud Library website. And you can copy, rename it. You could download it here. You can invite people to this. You can export it. You can get a link to it, rename it. You can also learn more and see what's new. So when you click on the what's new, it shows us what's new with the libraries, easy to work with and organize, which applications. I've also got a whole tutorial on using uh, the mobile application, uh, Adobe Capture on mobile to capture things and use those in the desktop applications. And down at the bottom, you can see even more non-Adobe integration. We can now integrate it with Word, Zapier, and even Gmail. And the last thing I wanna show you is adding things. So back to our libraries. This button right here, you can click and you can add anything else into those particular libraries. The only thing you can't add yet are Mogerts that way, uh, motion graphics templates. You can add, uh, well, I'll, I'll show you a whole list of them, but you can add uh, image formats, so JPEG, PNG, BMP, PSD, SVG, SVG GIF, JPEG, uh, TIFF, PDF, HEIC, and IF, DNG, PSD, Illustrator template, InDesign template, Flash, a whole bunch of movie formats, audio formats. Now I do want to show you if you do have a Mogert and you want to stick it in a library. Right now this is in the Essential Graphics. Pretty simple, right click copy to a certain library and you just pick it and it goes in there. Using libraries makes total sense, not only for me locally, but anywhere I need to go and log into my Creative Cloud account, I've got access to my libraries, I've got it on my mobile device, and you can capture things as I mentioned and uh, add them to the library. Whew. Hey, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. It really does mean a lot to us. We're getting close to the big 100K mark. And wouldn't you love to be the person that takes us over the edge? Um, if you want to support us more, you can do that through our online store at videoreveal.com slash shop. There you can donate once or monthly, any amount you want. There's a bunch of free stuff there and you can buy our 50 split screens. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to alert you to the functionality that you have right in the applications you already.